Всем привет, с вами Сокол491. Вот моя страничка, добавляйтесь в друзья. Вот мой канал на YouTube. Подписывайтесь, смотрите новые видео. Итак, что же я вам сегодня расскажу? Я расскажу вам о том, как сделать свою собственную игру в программе Game Maker. Итак, для начала, что же может программа Game Maker? Можно создать свою игру в 2D. Вид сверху. Сейчас покажу пример этой игры. Я его как-то давным-давно создавал. Уже прошло много лет с тех пор. Но исходники у меня сохранились, поэтому покажу вам его. Ну, как в начале обычной игры, меню, потом текст. И вот мы играем. То есть она у меня не законченная. Некоторые картинки не работают. Здесь есть разные виды оружия. РПГ, УЗИ, ТОС, Калашников, Снайперка, СВД и так далее. Итак, что еще можно сделать? Можно сделать свой собственный, свою собственную операционную систему. Конечно, XP и Linux вы не сделаете с помощью него, но все же. Можно рисовать даже на рабочем столе. Изменять курсор. Смотреть видео, выходить в интернет, смотреть картинки, слушать музыку. Правда, проигрыватель долго грузится, поэтому я не буду его ждать сейчас. Есть такое же меню пуск. Итак, еще можно создать 3D игру. Как видит программа нашу игру 3D? То есть не как видим мы, а как видит программа ее. Она ее видит как лабиринт, видом сверху. Вот синенькая точка это наш главный герой. Красная на нем точка это туда, куда он смотрит. Итак. Как же видим мы эту игру? Вот примерно так. Все спрайты взяты из игры Doom. Так, можно еще сделать платформер. В данный момент я над ним работаю. Итак, теперь давайте попробуем сделать свою собственную игру. Заходим в программу Game Maker, создаем спрайт новый. Здесь можно загрузить свой спрайт, либо нарисовать его прямо э, в программе. Итак, маленько приблизим и рисуем нашего главного героя.
Если вы нажмете кнопку загрузить спрайт, то можно, в принципе, загрузить любое изображение, либо скачанное из интернета, либо нарисованное в фотошопе, что намного удобнее. Ну, так как мне здесь, в принципе, красота не главное, главное изображение, делаем по центру, нажимаем ОК. Создаем объект, приделаем к нему наш спрайт, и теперь э, делаем движение. Нажимаем «Добавить события», наж... э, кло... кнопка нажата, и выбираем стрелки. Здесь можно выбрать также буквы управления А, Д, С, В. Но я сделаю пока что стрелки. Стрелка влево, события ей, движение влево, скорость 2, допустим. А, нажимаем «Ок». Если кнопка отпущена, нажимаем влево, то он стоит со, сто... со скоростью 0. И также проделываем для каждой кнопки вправо. Нажимаем вправо, скорость 2. Кнопка опу... опущена, вправо 0. То есть он стоит. Вверх. И то же самое вниз. Эта программа очень удобная, GameMaker. В ней можно писать на языке программирования. Язык у нее, э, в принципе, свой, но похож он чем-то на C и C++. Я вам советую писать переменные в тра транслитом, то есть а, русские слова английскими буквами. Допустим, там скорость равно там 0 или там 3, 2, ну что угодно. Вот. И пишите английскими буквами русское слово скорость. Во-первых, вы, вы не запутаетесь, во-вторых, э, программа также прочитает с, с легкостью это. Так, создаем стену. Сейчас создадим какую-нибудь коробку, какой-нибудь ящик. По центру, окей. Создаем для него объект. Напоминаю, что название спрайта и название объекта и вообще... Любые названия в этой программе не должны совпадать, потому что сама программа будет путаться и выдавать вам ошибку. И если вы будете писать в скрипт, в скрипт и в нем указывать, допустим, название объекта или спрайта, то э, программа также может запутаться и вместо объекта выдать вам спрайт или, скорее всего, ошибку. Итак, зажимаем Shift. Так, сначала выбираем 32 потому что у нас ширина и длина спрайта по 32. Зажимаем Shift и рисуем. Если Shift мы не будем зажимать, то он у нас будет рисовать по одному, то есть ставить по одному ящику. Если нажмем Alt, то он будет его двигать не по сетке, а так, как вам нужно. Так, ну создадим несколько стен каких-нибудь. Что-то подобное лабиринта. Ставим туда нашего главного героя и пробуем, будет ли он у нас ходить. Так он у нас ходит. Срабатывает скрипт столкновения со стеной скорость 0. Это значит, что он при касании стены будет останавливаться. Итак, можно еще что-нибудь сюда добавить. Допустим, какие-нибудь э, монетки или печеньки. Добавляем к ним скрипт. Ой, спрайт. Рисуем. 
Я не буду заморачиваться, сделаю круг. А, трансформация и обрезать. Это мы убираем лишнее пространство, не заполненное цветом. Добавляем его в объект. Этот наш спрайт. Нажимаем ОК. Тоже здесь не будем заморачиваться. Столкновение с объектом и удаление. Чтобы, когда наш герой собрал, собирал монетки эти, они удалялись. То есть, исчезали. В герое столкновение с объектом выбираем э, Score и присваиваем ему 40. И раскидываем их по нашей карте. Пробуем. Вот у нас наверху появляется 40. Ага. После каждого нажатия... О. Короче, я забыл поставить галочку относительно в нашем герое. То есть, когда... Вот она. Герой собирает эти печеньки. Он собирает не всего... Не одну, а все. И чтобы у нас... Итак, что еще можно сюда добавить? Можно сюда добавить либо выход из игры, конец игры, либо добавить какой-нибудь... Так. Какой-нибудь счетчик очков. Добавляем его в конец нашей карты. Вот здесь. При столкновении объекта главного героя с этим квадратом, с черным, вылазит окошко, в котором мы вписываем свое имя, либо никнейм. И справа будет у нас наши набранные очки. Мы набрали их 400. Вот она вылезла. Окошко. Теперь вводим свое имя. Оно у нас будет записываться в реестре. Так, а вот и первый баг. Угу. Как его устранить? А запросто. Мы при касании главного героя с этим черным квадратом просто возьмем и удалим его. Можно поставить конец игры, в принципе, но я лучше сделаю так. И маленько скорость увеличу, потому что э, слишком он долго ходит по нашей карте. Пускай он побыстрее маленько ходит. Слишком уж медленно. Итак, пробуем. Обратите внимание, что старое имя у нас осталось. Оно записалось в реестре. Вписываем новое. Готово. Играем дальше. Так, теперь сохраняем наш проект. На рабочий стол. Вписываем имя ему. Допустим, игра. Вот у нас появился на рабочем столе. И сохраняем его в формате EXE с тем же названием. Вот он у нас появился. Где же можно изменять настройки? Вот они. Допустим, иконка игры, либо полоса загрузки, фон. И так далее. Здесь можно изменять все. 
Ну, а с вами был Сокол 491. Добавляйте меня в друзья, подписывайтесь на канал на YouTube. Удачного всем дня. Пока. Всем привет, с вами Сокол 491. Сегодня я вам расскажу, как сделать кнопку продолжить в своей игре. Продемонстрирую я это вам на фоне своей игры. Итак, какие-то действия мы совершаем в игре. Потом выходим в меню и нажимаем кнопку продолжить. И продолжаем играть. Итак, как же это сделать в своей игре? Я тут маленько набросал уже небольшой платформер. Начнем с того, что мы создаем новую комнату. Называем ее меню. Кнопочки для меню я уже создал. Кнопка старт. При нажатии левой кнопкой на нее э, нас перекидывает в следующую комнату. Так, и кнопка выход. Левая кнопка нажата. Срабатывает команда выход из игры. Добавляем их в наше меню. Итак, сразу же отключаем лишние функции, нажимаем другое и убираем все галочки. Нажимаем ОК. Теперь заходим в нашего героя. Нажимаем клавиатура, выбираем Escape. И задаем команду переход в другую комнату и выбираем эту комнату. Так, пробуем. Вот у нас появилось меню, нажимаем старт, мы попадаем в игру. Нажимаем Escape, мы попадаем в, ми в меню обратно. Нажимаем выход, мы выходим из игры. Теперь создаем кнопку продолжить. Она у меня пока что пустая. Я воспользуюсь программой Action Decoder. Нажимаю сохранить. Ввожу имя файла и придумываю, придумываю ему расширение. Так, копирую. И тоже создаю код загрузки этого же файла. Итак, код сохранения мы вставляем на, на нашу кнопку Escape. И заносим его вверх, чтобы сначала сохранялся файл, а потом мы переходили э, в меню. Иначе у нас просто сохраняться файл не будет. Теперь... Кнопка «Продолжить», левая кнопка нажата, и вставляем код загрузки файла. Окей. Добавляем кнопку в наше меню. Можно сохранить проект на рабочем столе сразу же, и там его проверить. Загружаем проект. Нажимаем старт, совершаем какие-то действия в игре, нажимаем escape, у нас создается на рабочем столе файл. Нажимаем продолжить, игра продолжается. Естественно, файл создается не на рабочем столе, а просто рядом с игрой, рядом с файлом с игрой. Поэтому, если у вас будет э, игра в какой-то папке, то файл будет папки создаваться. Также можно выйти полностью из игры и нажать продолжить. Итак, не забывайте добавлять меня в друзья ВКонтакте, подписываться на канал, ставить лайки, комментировать, предлагать свои идеи для съемки следующего видео. Ну а с вами был Сокол 491. Удачного вам дня. Увидимся в следующем видео. Пока!
Hey guys, this is Jacko Buddy with BreakBlock.org, and today we're going to be looking at the Game Maker 2D engine, which you can either get from the company YoYo -Yo Games, and it's also available on Steam. And I'm actually running the uh, the Steam version because I like some of the uh, the features it has, and just being able to run it and update it through Steam. Now, this tutorial is meant for and really designed for people who have never worked in Game Maker before and also people who've never had any programming experience before but want to know how to make some of their own games. And so today we're going to be making a small project called Maze Man. And Maze Man is a very simple game concept. Basically, we're going to make a little character and we're going to make some walls and we're going to put him inside this maze and then he's just gonna move in a certain direction until he hits a wall and just gonna have to try and navigate this maze. Very simple, not exactly the most exciting game, but it's a good simple project that we can use to really begin to learn the Game Maker engine. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and start up your Game Maker engine if you wanna work along with me or else you can just watch on my screen as I do everything. Uh, I do suggest that what, as you watch this video, you do it yourself on your version of Game Maker Studio if you already purchased it and you can just pause this video do what you need to do whatever step I just explained and then you can unpause the video move to the next step it's a very good way to learn some programming if you're new to the programming field or if you're just watching to get a grasp for Game Maker then that's fine too so what you have here is your work area where you're going to be working from now to the end of time in Game Maker and basically this big broad light gray area in the middle is like your workspace and everything that you do whether you're writing code or you're building a level or designing characters is all going to be done within this big gray space right here now at the bottom below that you have this dark gray block and that is pretty much your uh, compile information whenever you create your program or create your game to go to run your game after you're done programming it it's gonna run say a bunch of stuff that really doesn't matter to you unless you get an error in which case this bottom area will give you your errors now a very important and a very cool key feature to game maker is this left panel over here that runs vertically along the screen this is where all of the resources that make up your game is stored, which is really cool because in conventional programming, you have to remember these folders and these long paths, and then you have to enter them in by hand, but Game Maker automatically organizes your stuff for you. And we're going to use that a little bit in this tutorial. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to set up our sprites, which is going to go into the sprite folder right there on the top. You can see I just clicked it there. Sprites are images. That's all they really are. They can be a still image. They can be an animation. Whatever uh, you know, you really want it to be. It can be a logo, a character, an effect. Whatever you think would be good to go in that folder that you need to use. Um, so what we're going to do to create a sprite, there's two ways you can do that. I'm going to go and show you both. You can right click where on the name sprites. And you're going to get this option right here where you can say create sprite and that's one way to make it or you can come to the top right here and you have this little guy that is certainly not any kind of ripoff of Pac-Man and you can just click that and boom you have a new sprite and it's gonna bring this up and this is your sprite properties window um, a few things that you need to look at here first of all your name so we're gonna go and name this sprite something that means something to us uh, I usually like to do SPR at the beginning of my sprites just so when I'm writing code I know that it's a sprite and I'm going to do an underscore, and I'm going to call it player. So we're going to do SPR underscore player. Now, if you already have a sprite image made, you can do load sprite right there, and you can pull that image in, and you'll be ready to go. But in our case, we're going to go ahead and make our own sprite, and so we're going to hit edit sprite. And the rest of this stuff along the side here has to do with collisions and putting certain points on your character as to like your origin point. None of that is really something we're going to be looking at today um, in later tutorials and in the future of break block as we get more advanced of our tutorials then we will begin to look into some of that but today all you need to do is hit edit sprite and it's going to bring up your sprite editor and this is where in like an animation you can see all your individual frames and you can manage things there um, you can even click this little box here show preview and that will actually play your animations for you once you load an animation you can adjust the animation speed down here 
But uh, we're not going to be using an animation as, like I said, it's a very simple, basic, easy program for beginners. So what you're going to do, you're going to go ahead and either go to File and New right there, or I usually just click this little button right here, the little paper with a plus sign, and that's going to make a new image. You can see it's called Image Zero. You could just leave it as that. That really doesn't matter. You can double click that, and it's going to open up your image editor. And the first thing I always do when I'm working on an image as small as this, which is a 32 by 32 image, which is GameMaker's default size, is I hit plus a few times just so I can get real nice up and close on this image. And so we're going to make a little character. And so I think for mine, I'm going to do is yellow over there. And I'm going to pick like my circle tool. And this works just like MS Paint or any of those little simple programs that you use in Windows. Uh, it does all the same stuff. You got your filling tool, you got your line tool, everything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw a real basic, crude looking character together. Uh, you know, just for the sake of the tutorial. This is by no means something I would go publishing on uh, Steam or another uh, game platform and try and sell it, but we'll make a little smiley face guy. And that's going to be my character. So I'm going to hit, when you're done, you're going to hit this little check mark right here. So if you need a minute to make your image, you can go ahead and pause the video, throw your character together, and then whenever you're uh, ready, play the video again, and we're going to go ahead and hit done. Um, actually, one thing I will go back and show you real quick in here, if you're ever interested backing up your stuff, you can hit file and save as ping image, PNG. And that will actually let you save it as an external file. But if you just do the check mark, and then you do a check mark, and then at the bottom you hit your OK check mark, it's all saved. And you can see now your little character is right there on the left side of the screen underneath Sprite. And so you have SPR player in your Sprites folder. Um, so we need another Sprite as well to go with him. So we're going to go ahead and make another Sprite. And I'm going to call it SPR underscore wall. And we're going to do edit again and we're going to make our new image and we're going to go in and this is going to be the wall that our character has to navigate through so i'm going to pick i guess this red right here and a filling tool do that but now it's going to be really really blinding so i'm going to do a little darker and then i'm going to take a darker red and do a second thick line and we're going to go like this kind of put some little bounds on the block just to give it a little personality instead of just a big red nasty looking square at least it's got what we can call some shading on it so we're gonna go ahead and hit OK on that and now we got both of our sprites right here on your left side you can see their name and their image now an image by itself is gonna do nothing it's got no coding it has nothing whatsoever so what we have to do now is we have to make what's called an object and if you look below all these other folders right there uh, you have your objects folder and your objects folder is where all the objects imagine that in your image or in your uh, your program are going to go and so just like sprites you can either right click and hit create object or what you eventually probably start doing as you learn the shorthand way is just hit the little circle right there the little circle is always game maker symbol for an object just like with sprites it's the little pac-man so we're going to go and hit our circle and we're going to create a new object and you're going to get this box right here and this my friends is where you're going to beat your head against walls for days and nights to come because this is where you do all of your programming or at least most of your programming and a lot of just manipulating stuff and you're going to get bugs and issues and have to fight with them but today we're going to do some very simple coding and we're not even really going to write code GameMaker does offer the ability to write your own code in a language called GML, GameMaker language. But today we're just going to use our drag and drop, drop system, which is their basically system made if you don't want to do programming, which is one of their features in GameMaker that's pretty cool. And so I usually start an object with obj underscore, just like a sprite, just so when I'm coding in later tutorials and in later projects, I know that it's going to be an object. And we're going to do it player just like our sprite. Now you see if I had just called it player and I just called my image player it would actually allow me to do that but in programming it's gonna get very confusing and I might even get some errors because both of them have the same name and GameMaker may not be sure which one I'm trying to call but now they're SPR player and OBJ player so they're completely different names as far as GameMaker is concerned. So what we're gonna do now is you see the sprite box right here 
uh, you have to assign a sprite to this if you want to be able to see it. And so you click this little button right here, the little drop down menu, and it's going to pop out. And you're going to hit SPR underscore player. And there's our little smiley face character or whatever image you made right there. Now, two things that are real cool that was recently added in Game Maker Studio and was in none of the old versions. You can actually from here create a new sprite or you can go and edit your sprite. And that's real cool because in the past you'd always have to go in and you'd go make your object and you go, hey, I forgot to make my sprite. And you got to get out of the object or even you can run both. Like I can come over here and double click and see I got two windows, but then your windows stack up. But now they made it where it's a lot more convenient to just go in and edit your sprite or make a new sprite without having to dig through folders and folders of sprites later when you get a large project. Um, a few things to note on here. We have our visible box and we definitely want our character to be seen. So we're going to make sure that visible is checked. Uh, solid. We could do him as solid, but the solid function in Game Maker is a little funny sometimes and a little buggy. I usually like to try and just hard code my own collisions and I'm going to show you how to do that. It's real simple. But I find whenever you take control of your own instead of letting Game Maker do it, you're usually better off because you're going to have uh, unforeseen consequences if you try and do too much stuff automatically. Uh, persistent, we don't really need to worry about in this case, but uh, basically if you have multiple rooms or levels or areas in your game, then whatever values you set in this object will carry over to each room instead of resetting at the beginning of each room. And then uses physics, that's another new Game Maker Studio feature. We're not really going to get into that today. And then your depth is a decider over what objects lie on top of other objects. If you leave every object at zero, then whatever object was placed last is on top every time. And so basically if I place two characters and then I move one character underneath the other character, he'll go behind them. Which is a cool feature in 2D games because you could have like a tree and your character can go hide behind the tree or in a bush or something like that. And so that's when the depth comes into play. Or if you add a background, you're going to want your background to be a really far back depth. So that way it's behind everything instead of on top of everything. Um, parent and mask we're going to save for another day as well. A real cool thing in Game Maker, if you need to review what's in your object, you can do show information. And see so it brings up this little box here, and this is just all the information about my object, which doesn't look like much, but I'll show you this again in a little bit, and it's going to be a lot longer. So now, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and we're going to make a second object, because we need that. And so we're going to do a new object, obj underscore wall, and we're going to bring in our wall sprite. And I guess just for the sake of the fact that we're making a big brick wall, I'm going to go ahead and check solid. Uh, really not going to matter because solid objects only collide if they're both solid. So it's not really going to matter. But usually when I make a big hard wall that I want nothing getting out, just for good measure I go ahead and hit solid because it's not going to affect anything unless two objects are solid. And my walls are going to be bounding our room so we don't want anything getting out. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK on that. And now... We have our sprites and we have the sprites tied to our objects, but we can't do anything because we don't have any levels. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create what's called a room. And you have a room folder right there, right underneath your objects folder. And just like before, you can either right click and do new room, or I'm going to go up here and you got the big square right there, and that's going to be your new room. So I'm going to click that and it's going to bring this guy up. And this is your room editor. Room editors is another real cool feature of Game Maker because you actually get to build your levels and build your areas rather than trying to code them in and saying one line at a time, oh, I need a wall here, and I need a wall here, and I need a wall here. You can just click and put stuff down. And so I'm going to go ahead and maximize this window so we can see everything that's going on a lot better. A um, few things to note, if you hold down the left mouse button, it's going to place an object and let you move it around like that in your space. And so that's a real good trick for uh, moving on. But once you put it down, it's going to kind of stop. But then, starting with Game Maker Studio, you can pick it back up with your left mouse button. So you can see I have our little character right here. You select it over in the left, and I just click, and I got him picked up. Um, on top of that, you can right-click on that object, and you get a bunch of little things like that. Uh, if you right click off of them, it does nothing. Uh, if you hold down your middle mouse button, you can actually move around this room space 
freely just by holding down the middle mouse button and then your mouse wheel will zoom in and out which is also something new in game maker game makers never had zooming around in the room editor nor did it ever have this checkered space out here before that is actually outside of your room and no matter what you do whenever you set a camera or when you look at this room you're not gonna see anything in there so why would I want to do that well if I wanted something to come flying at my character from off screen then maybe what I would do is have it out here in the zero space like I can put you know for example I'll put a little character out here and he's out here so he's not even in our game area but I can have him move left and move inside of it and the player won't even see him coming until he comes into the room and so that's a cool feature um, now obviously we only want one player and we definitely don't want the player outside of a room so when you want to get rid of them you can right click him and you can hit delete and then this guy is not in the right place so what you can do the, your best friends in the room editor is the control and the shift key you're gonna hold down control shift and then right click and he's gone and that's real cool and uh in case you didn't notice because I always forget that this exists over here in the bottom left of your room editor you can see where our mouse is at you have all your controls kind of written there like you can see uh, if you hold all then you just no snap which means instead of moving on this grid see like I can just drag him around in zero space and now he's free from that grid and eventually he gets back on the grid if you let go of alt but he hit alt and I'm free from the grid again and so you got that and then you have a bunch of different little features over there um a real good one I'll show you in a minute is control shift left click but first let's kind of get some stuff built um, to change your object what you can do is either come down to this menu right here click the little context menu and pick like if I want object wall and see up here it changes the image and it gives me some stats right there that you can change uh, we don't really need to worry about any of those or what I usually do is you have this box right here where it's showing your, your object just click it and there's the exact same menu so I find that learning the shortcuts in Game Maker is a good idea because you're going to save a lot of time when you can just come up here, click, pick what you want, go instead of having to come down here and click this and then dig through the menus. Everything's just a little quicker when you learn the short keys. And programming is a long, tedious process already, so you might as well speed it up as much as possible by learning those. So anyway, we want to play some walls. So we're going to go up to our left, and you see we have this grid. And it's 32 by 32, which is the same size as our image. So that's really nice because then our images will fit perfectly into this grid. And they're not going to overlap. They're not going to be too small. They're the exact size of our grid. Which, by the way, this grid, you can actually turn off right here. I know sometimes, like, when I want to look at how my room looks, I turn that off. But since all of our stuff is 32 by 32, and our grid is 32 by 32, we might as well leave it on. It just makes our job a little easier. So to place our object, we're just going to left click, left click, left click. And we're going to see we're going to start building a wall. And you want a wall all the way around this level because we don't want our character getting out of the level and going to a space where you can't see him on camera. I don't know if you've ever played a, like a 3D game where your character falls through the ground or goes through a wall and then you're out in zero space. We don't, we don't want that. So we're going to make sure that never happens by bounding this whole area with a big brick wall. Now... Just clicking one time like this is going to be a long process. So what we're going to do is going to do control shift and then you're going to hold down the left mouse button and just drag. And you see it's going to place your objects. And then if I go like this, oh, I got off. Control shift again. Hold down the right mouse button and you can just clean it up. And you don't even have to let go of control shift. I can just go off, keep holding it down, do the right mouse and it's gone again. And so that just speeds up everything a lot because instead of trying to sit here and click everything and then Oh, I got one bad object. Let me right-click, delete, right-click, delete, right-click, delete. No, you can just control shift, right-click, and it's gone. And you see, now we have our whole level bound in this nice, pretty little box. And so our character is in no way ever going to get out. And so now, as the name implies, this is Maze Man. Now, how can this be Maze Man if we don't have a maze? So I'm going to throw together a little maze. Um... For the sake of teaching a player, it's just a good idea to kind of give them a straight line to follow at the beginning of a game. Uh, some little free... As if I, whoop, I did not like when I did that. I'm going to go and hit OK. Me. I think I put an object on top of another one. Sorry about that. Uh, if you ever get that stuff, don't panic. Hit OK. Keep going. But anyway, so we're going to keep going. And we're going to build our little maze. And I'm not going to click on top of an object like that again. Because Game Maker 
Game Maker Studio is a little whiny. I'm not going to lie to you. Game Maker Studio likes to cry like a big baby sometimes. So get the error. If it's important, read it. If it's not, whatever. Um, so, okay, we got this little maze right here that our character is going to be able to navigate through. And one thing kind of cool that's also new with Studio is this bottom left. You can see you have a, like a map. It's like a mini map in a video game of this area already. So that's just kind of cool because it's a nice little overview because if our level is really big, you're not going to be able to see it all on one screen. So that's kind of like an overview of everything. <coughs> now, this is actually not necessary in order for this game to work because our game fits on our screen. But I'm going to go ahead and show you just real quick how to set up the basic default view in Game Maker. What you're going to do is you're going to click your view tab here on the left. And you're going to get this guy. And it looks real intimidating. Don't panic. Hit enable the use of views and then hit visible room starts and you see this little it's hard to see probably in the video but if you look on your game there's a bounding box that just went around my room like if I turn off the grid see you can still see it right there uh, let me move a few of these boxes see that line that is a bounding box of the view and basically that's my camera and so the camera is going to stay inside of that box even if I increase the size of my room which by the way in settings Right here, I can do the width and the height of my room. So, like, if I increase this width right here to, like, 2,000, then I have all of this part of the level over here. But if I do view, see, like, the view just bounds right there. And so this is all still going to be invisible unless I move that camera. And uh, this is going to be covered in a later tutorial. I'm going to do a tutorial where we go over views. But if you look, you can actually, like, lock the view to a character and have it scroll with the character so that as you move to the level the camera will scroll with you and that way as you have a huge level the whole thing getting on the screen at the same time and see now our mini map down here even shows everything that's outside of that and so that's where views come into play so we'll go and just leave that on because <clears throat> that's a good thing just to have so now what we need to do we need to add our player so we're going to get our player and we're going to drop him right here this looks like a good starting spot right in that little corner the only real way to go is right, and so that'll be a nice little way to start them out. So when you're done with your room, you're going to go up here just like everything else in Game Maker, hit your little check mark, and boom. And you see we have room zero right there, and what we're going to do real quick, uh, just for the sake of programming, because I did not even think about this, we're going to double click room zero, and we're going to come back up to the screen right here, and then we're going to go settings, and you have your name of your room. And we're going to do rm underscore game. It's just a good idea to name everything. Get into the habit now. It helps a lot later. Okay. Now, you're going to go to the top. And you're going to hit this little green arrow right here. And it's going to compile. And you can see this little window running. None of that matters to us. Boom. Look at that. That's a game right there. But hey, it's not doing anything. Why isn't it doing anything, guys? Oh, because we haven't put any programming into this game yet. We haven't programmed him to move. We haven't programmed anything to happen. <clears throat> and so since this video has been running on about 25 minutes now, just under 25 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and, and take a break here. We're going to call it quits on this tutorial, but I'm hoping that you got a good perspective of where your sprites are and your objects and your rooms and kind of what each one is and how to mess with this map. And so you can kind of go on there and you can play with uh, you know the blocks, put them around. And then tune in for part two of this tutorial, and I'm going to make this character move, and we're going to lock him to where when you're moving one way, you can't move another way until he stops. And so that way we can make these complex mazes where you have to figure out the right way to move your character to get him navigated to the maze. And then we're even going to put an end goal on the maze, and we might put a few little traps on there to catch the player as well. So make sure to tune in for part two, but until then, everyone have a good day, and happy programming. Welcome to a video on how to use rooms in Game Maker. And rooms in Game Maker are really what you might classically think of as levels. So really, this is a leveling system. Um, I'm making this really high, high quality graphics uh, right here. Here's my sprite. It's just a little blob that says next. And so the idea is when my character runs into this blob, it'll take me to the next room. Let's just see how that works. So here we go. There's the sprite got my sprite set up now I need to make an object for it too I'll call it obj next and I'll add in um, well I need to choose the sprite first and then I'll add in 
an event. And the event is just a collision with my character, and I'll use it for the queen character. This is the same sort of format I've been using in past videos, where I've got this queen and this swordsman that can walk around. So when the queen hits the next icon, well, she should go to the next room, right? So let me just do next room. All right. Now this is only going to work if I actually have a next room to go to. So let's look at what my first room looks like. Here's my first room. Let me get rid of this guy. So we just have the queen. And then let me add out the object next. So if she runs into this, she'll go to the next room. But what's in the next room? Well, I'm going to delete this to start with. And so right now there is no next room. And in fact, if I try to do this, there'd be an error because I can't go to the next room. So error. Okay, because there is no next room. Let me show you a good way to get around this problem or to s sort of safeguard against this problem. When you are going to the next room, first just do this check to see if there is a next room. So there's this check next action. And if you do this, uh, again, if next room exists, and there aren't even any options for it. So if next room exists, go to the next room. This is just a nice little safeguard to make sure that you're never trying to go to the next room if there is no next room and you'll prevent errors from happening. Now again, I, I just like to use these code blocks anytime I'm using a condition. Um, so let's play this now and let's just make sure it doesn't give me an error. So if I go here now, it won't, it won't work. Good, that's what I wanted. Now let's see what happens if I actually create a next room. So here's a new room and I will call it, I'm gonna change the name of it from the default name to second room and that looks good. Now if I try to do it, it should allow me to go from the first room to the second room. And there we go, there's a second room, but there's nothing in the second room, so let's add something in the second room. I will add my little knight character. And this is a little tricky thing here. If I add him, oops, if I add my knight, you would or my swordsman, you'd think that he, this would work and he could just walk around, but there's going to be a problem. He won't actually be able to walk around and it has to do with the grid. So now he's just stuck. He, I can't move him around. And the reason for it is that my motion system, if you've watched these videos in order, you've seen that I set it up on um, a grid grid-based motion system and so he has to be aligned with the grid in order to be able to respond to my keyboard commands so right now now he's aligned to the grid because it's a 50 by 50 which is how I had set the game up notice that the first room was a 50 by 50 grid as well so really in this game if I'm going to be using these characters I should have everything based off of a 50 50 grid so now if I play it when I go to the next room the next room will be there waiting for me very cool except that he still doesn't work, so I lied. Delete him, let's try it one more time. I'll put him in here, and let's just check to see if that works. I'm not sure why that one didn't work. Um, and fingers crossed, and now he works, so he must have still not been quite aligned with the grid. All right, that's kind of a side issue. The whole point of this is the how we how we get from one room to the next. So we could have, mul we could have lots of rooms. We don't just need two, so let me uh, put in in the second room, let me get rid of this guy, and let me put in a queen again, and let me put in another object next. So here's the second room, so if she gets there, then we should go to the third room, but we don't have a third room, so let's make it. So here's my third room, I'm going to call it room, or I'll call it third room, and I will set the grid right away so I don't forget, 50 by 50, and I'll add a queen to this one as well. So objects, add a queen, and I will, well, let's, I'll add her over here this time, and I'll have her come across this way to get to the next room. And then I'll add another room. And this, this fourth room, I'll call it the fourth room. Fourth room, and make sure I set the grid 50-50. 50, 50, and I'll put the queen at the top, so objects, queen at the top, and I'll put the next at the bottom, and let's just see how this all works now. So hopefully she's able to move from room to room. So here's the first room. Here's the second room. And as we complete it, we should go to the third room. And there it is. And the fourth room should go from the top to the bottom. 
And there we go. And so maybe this could be like the finish, and this could be the end of the game saying, hey, you beat the game. So this is the idea of how rooms work. Let me just show you a few more cool things about this. Um, first is the idea of persistence. And this is kind of a, maybe a little more advanced concept, but I just want you to see it. I'm going to click into the queen object and check this persistent box. Persistent. So the queen is going to now be persistent, which means, you know, if you use that word in everyday English, that means sort of you're not going to give up on something. You're going to keep at it and keep at it. You're going to stick around. Um, and so in this case, that's exactly what the queen's going to do. She's going to stick around. She's going to be, if she, if she was in the first room, she's going to persist or continue to exist in the second room. Now, this is going to be weird, actually. This is going to be probably not what you expect. Maybe. Okay, now she's persistent. So now there are two queens, right? Because I had at this queen was the one that started in the second room, and this one persisted from the first room. So how many queens do you think there are going to be once I get to here? Well, now there are three queens. Again, the first two persisted, and then there was another one in the third room. Now we've got four queens walking around. All right. So really what you could do if you wanted to is you could have a persistent object, and maybe that's your main character, maybe it's not. Um, and and that character could continue from room to room. Um, let me just let me do that, and let me just get rid of the queen from these other rooms. So I'll delete that queen, get rid of this queen, and get rid of this queen. And then my queen will just persist or continue to exist from room to room. So as I go here to the next one, there she's still she's still there. And really, I'm actually changing rooms every time here. All right. Now, what I want to show is the the way that you can do transitions. And these are, you know, there's really nothing too fancy about these, but just just to expose you to them so you can play around and figure out what you want. Now, I didn't have a single transition at all. Mine just automatically changed to the next room. Here's how you do a transition. So, where it says go to next, I can change this to have a transition and let's try like a oh, I don't know. Uh let's try a shift from left and to help me under to help me visualize these I'm just going to give these background colors so the first room can have a background color of orange the second room can have a background color of blue okay so now we've got some background colors just for the first two rooms so at least we can see it so the queen walks around runs into the next and there there's a there was a little transition that showed us the way to the next one and there's another little transition. So you can play around with those transitions and you can see if you can get them to look the way you want them to look and, and hopefully you can. Um, in any case, uh, I hope that helps you understand the basics of how rooms work. Um, to, to leave you, I want to just show you that there are more actions. So if I go here and I look at the actions for rooms, you have more than just next room. There's also previous room. There's a restart room there's a different room so you could choose any of the rooms and you might want to use that like if you had an easy medium or hard setting on the main menu screen you could choose you know to go to the hard room or you could cho choose to go to the medium room anyway um, I hope these help this is just a check to see if there's next which we used this is a check to see if there's a previous which we did not use yet so anyway I uh, hope that helps I'll see you in the next video and we'll do one more thing with rooms and that is set up a main menu and see how that works. So see you in the next video.